guys, it's Philip again in the garage, and I'm here today to talk to y'all about four different things that you can do to make your home gym a fun, engaging, and effective place, and I'm going to bring those to y'all right now. Now, when building your home gym to be a fun and engaging space, the first thing that you should do is buy equipment that your uh, public gym doesn't have. If you've spent any significant amount of time in a public gym or a number of public gyms, you realize they have, with a few exceptions, the same basic equipment, uh, whether that be cardio or resistance training. When building a home gym, you can make it whatever you want. You can put whatever you want in it and you can dedicate the space to really however you want to train. So when building it, add some of the basic stuff that you might find in a public gym you know, such as a lat low row or a power rack or your real basic things, but also make it fun, change it up, and just get stuff that you wouldn't typically get to use in a public gym. I know myself, I have a deadlift jack to use for deadlifts. I have monoliths to use uh, to make benching easier. I have some specialty bars right up there that um, can add some variation to my pressing movements and my uh, squat movements. And I have a belt squat in here um, because I never got to use one of those in a public gym. So when you're building your home gym out, whether it be a small or a big piece, um, just go ahead and throw in that variety, throw in some things that you don't typically um, get to use at a public gym and really give your gym its own character through the equipment that you outfit it with. Now, when building a home gym, the second thing that I would do is really consider whether a home gym is for you. Do any research on the pieces that you buy for your home gym before you buy them. And if at all possible, buy once, cry once. Now, a home gym is not for everybody. It is a different environment than a public gym. It has its own list of pros and cons that I'm not gonna go into great detail on right now, but it is something that definitely needs to be considered um, if it's for you, if you are the kind of person who works out just because you enjoy working out and it gives you a um, safe haven, a place where you can just relax and do what you enjoy doing um, in your own spare time. If you like to be around people or if you like to um, really lift alone has to be considered and there are a lot of factors. So just really take stock of what a home gym will do for you and what it will take away in your life and make that decision um, before you invest in really any equipment. Once you do invest in equipment, um, remember to research what you're getting, um, look at people's firsthand experiences, look at popular um, home gym channels to see if they have done any reviews on them. I know Basement Brandon is a great resource, Garage Gym Reviews is a pretty good resource, and uh, quite a few others are out there that have given a glimpse into uh, the various different pieces of home gym equipment. So get out there, do your research, find out if it's really what you think it is and what you want before buying it, and you'll be set. Now, after you do your research, I would definitely consider buying once and crying once. It's a lot easier once you've made up your mind to build a home gym to buy what you want, buy something that is going to last you for a very long time, and to buy it as an investment than it is to start way lower than you want and have to sell that equipment, most likely at a loss, and buy what you really wanted in the first place. So do your research and buy what you need from the get-go. Now, when building a home gym, the third thing to consider is build with utility in mind. You're going to have a limited amount of space when building a home gym, unless you have one of those crazy basement gyms that you see floating around the internet. So go ahead and pick pieces that maximize the amount of movements that you can do um, for the space that they take up. For me, utility looks like a power rack first and foremost. It's going to let you do your benches and your squats, maybe military presses um, and pull-ups, all kinds of other things that are pretty obvious, but they also make um, an incredible variety of attachments 
four power racks with more being created every day. So I feel like a power rack for the space it takes up is going to give you possibly, you know, a hundred movements. Um, if you look at the coop squat that was made by um, Garage Gym Reviews. So for me, first and foremost, power rack um, will provide you the utility that you need. In addition, if you're considering any machines, try to pick up machines that you can do multiple things with. For me, I have a lat low row because it allows me to do lat pull downs, low rows, face pulls, tricep extensions, curls, and probably a bunch of other things if I really wanted to think about it. After that, I would finish up with small pieces, uh, maybe like a prowler sled or any other like grip implements that would let you do um, some, some other just small things and not take up really any space at all. And just um, with the combination of all that, give you a, a lot of things to do for just the small amount of space that it is gonna take up. Now, the fourth thing that I would do when building a home gym, and I would argue it's the most important thing, is do the small things to make the space your own. When I started this home gym, I did not have any decorations or any lighting in here. And it looked like a dungeon. It did not look like a place that I really wanted to train. I guess I'm just not that hardcore. When I actually started doing the little things, adding decorations that I felt like gave this space the energy that I wanted it to have, adding lighting so that it was much more lively in this area, taping down my gorilla mat so that I didn't see cracks in between each stall mat, adding wall control so that I could put accessories on it and make it feel more like a hardcore gym, if you will. When I did all of those things, this space transformed. It made it into a space that I actually wanted to spend time in. It made it a space that I wanted to be in even if I wasn't lifting weights. And so I think that making that space your own is gonna really encourage you uh, to spend more time in it and to work out more in it. So just go ahead, make it that space that you want it to be. So there you have it, guys. There are four tips that I would give you to make your space a fun, enjoyable, engaging uh, workout area that you can really enjoy spending time in. If you have any more um, ideas, just put them down in the comments below, and I'll catch you guys later.